Hi everyone, this video is a demonstration on using BigBlue conferencing tool with Moodle. By the way, this is Dr. Anita, Department of Applied Mathematics and Computational Science, TC. We shall go on with the Moodle. This is my dashboard and you can find two of my courses in the dashboard. So, I will move with one of the courses. So, I can find my course dashboard and uh, I have my turn editing off but initially it would be in the off state so I have to explicitly turn editing on and then I have to move on where should I create a big blue button conferencing system so for the first topic I am going to plan to have a webinar so I will be adding an activity under topic 1 and you will be listed with many resources and activities so you can find big blue button here so on clicking the big blue button I'll be taken to this setting course page and I have an instance type and virtual classroom name so I have to give a virtual classroom name so I'm giving my virtual classroom name topic 1 webinar and you can notify this change to the users enroll and there are lot more settings you can use that so I'm touching upon only the basic settings and move on to this activity or room setting you can put a welcome message and you can also enable to wait the other users to wait for the moderator. So the users will not be able to join the uh, session until the moderator starts the session. So I always do this setting so that the students would not uh, getting themselves inside the session without me. And session can be recorded. So if you want the session to be recorded, please uh, make it on then participants so default this is the default settings you can leave the default settings as such all users enrolled would be the participant and all the students enrolled will be the viewer and the moderator that is the teacher will be the moderator here and you can even put a schedule for the session so for each and every big blue session you can launch a, a individual session or you can use the same session for all of your uh, webinar sessions so both are possible so if you want to have an exclusive uh, date or time for uh, starting your session you can mention here by enabling the opening time and enabling the closing time so if your class starts at 2 p.m. you can enable that by 2 p.m. and you can close the time by 2 5 or 2, 2 10 p.m. so that the students who are coming late for the sessions may not be able to join the meeting and we have other uh, settings as well so these are optional I can save and display or I can move to save and return to course so now under the project and project life cycles topic you can find the webinar initiated so uh, as a teacher I am moving now into that webinar so I can find a button join session so if I click this session I, as I am the moderator, I will be starting the session now. So, I will just click the session now. So, after joining the session, you would be asking, uh, you'd be asked this option. So, join with microphone so that you could communicate with the students also. And also ask the students to join in microphone mode and not in listen only mode so that they could interact with us. So, when I uh, click microphone, I should allow the tool to use to echo test so you can test here with a simple audio so you can I'm test here with now. a simple audio i'm talking you are currently so this is my this uh, big blue button conferencing system so uh, there are many options according to this uh, screen i have chat i have webcam i have audio i have emojis breakout rooms polling screen sharing and multi-user whiteboard so I shall uh, demonstrate few of these features in this video so I shall first go with chat so you can find a chat window here so that you could uh, have an initiated chat with your uh, students and the students could find the same chat window they could uh, send the message public and also private so if you want to restrict your users to only to go with public messages and not with private messages that's also possible with a single setting so I'll be explaining this setting box with you so in the left panel 
you uh, find uh, uh, all the options of public chat, shared notes and who are all the users and this panel talks about the big blue uh, session and uh, it also has the chat window and this is the area that is visible to our students and these area are not visible only what we display here will be visible to the students so I'll be exploring this area see uh, this is uh, this list who are all the speakers uh, talking and this is your name of the webinar room and you can start your recording by simply pressing this recording button and uh, the, these are some icons this is our uh, mic and this is for leaving audio only and not for ending meeting and this is for sharing our own webcam and this is for sharing your screen and there is a three dot options button here when you click that you can find making full screen and settings you can go for help keyboard you can set your own keyboard shortcuts and end meeting even logging out of this big blue button so all these options are available and here comes an interesting feature uh, you can find a gearbox here in the users list so it manages users so when I click that I can find many options so clear all status icons and mute all users so uh, you have the control over the voice of all the users mute all users except presenter and you can even save usernames so when I click the save usernames um, currently the only user is me but whenever I click the save username you can see a text file is being downloaded so I am trying to open that text file now so you will find my name here when the students are getting enrolled and started listening to the session you will be having their names also listed so as they have uh, uh, ha having their profile in their role number we shall find their names listed according to their role number so my practice would be taking attendance uh, just clicking by just clicking on that save usernames at the start of the session and at the middle of the session so this might be helpful for us to track the students entry into the session and also you can uh, see another uh, interesting option called lock viewers here there are uh, various options that you can lock your user not to do and to do see for example you can lock uh, so that they don't share their webcam and even you can lock so that they don't see others viewers webcam so that only uh, the teacher could see the student face and no others in the meeting can see the their faces and you can uh, lock their microphones and this is an especially a needed features locking private chat messages so this uh, disallows them to sending private messages while the session is on and uh, we can share notes uh, inside the session so this will be locking them from editing the shared notes so these are the uh, locking options available so we shall use whatever I want I usually prefer having this uh, having this one and editing if it is needed you can allow them to edit otherwise you can lock it and you can even lock to see other viewers in the users so just click apply and everything will be applied so users would be with the all the options you can see all these locking options are now happening right I was talking about sharing notes and here is the uh, way how to share notes so when I click the share notes I'll be getting an editor here and uh, with by using this editor I can uh, enter whatever data that I have and uh, I can ask the students to look into that shared notes so along with the presentation I can also uh, give them the supporting notes towards it and coming to these things I'll, I have covered chat and I have also covered webcam by simply clicking this I can uh, share the webcam and audio this is available and emojis it is available here and uh, breakout rooms I will be coming to the breakout rooms later and I will be moving with another important option called um, actions so when I click this plus button you can find there are three actions that can be performed so first option that I would like to explore is upload a presentation you need not share your screen to show your presentation just upload that presentation inside this big blue button so that students would be seeing your presentation directly from this conferencing system so I'll try to upload a presentation now and you are asked to browse for files you can just drag or browse for files okay so I'm just browsing for so I'm choosing one of my uh, PPT here and I have to upload by clicking the upload button and it is getting processed 
so after uploading our uh, presentation would be processed and each of the slide would be rendered into the system so now i think you are able to see uh, my presentation inside my big blue button and students would be uh, directly interacting with that so uh, this is a uh, powerpoint presentation loaded into and you can navigate uh, between the slides with this navigation so i can move with the next slide by just clicking this next slide more so i'll be thought of the day so at this time i have uh, loaded my presentation and i have to show a video at this time so what should be done now just move to this plus symbol and uh, you could find share an external video so i'll be sharing an external video and uh, you can uh, display any youtube url you can display a vimeo instructor media twitch and daily motion urls are supported and you can select any one of them here so i am selecting this external video and putting a share so now the video is getting displayed in this area so i am showing a video in between the presentation to them so this shall be done by this share an external so i can even make a pause over this one so uh, the students could see as well as hear from the same portal and you need not switch uh, between youtube uh, gmail and your gmeet everything is possible you can just forward and if i want to stop i can just move on and stop sharing external video and it resumes back to where i left in the powerpoint presentation and it's also possible to annotate inside so i can choose a tool from this set of icons and i could annotate here so i can take a pencil and i can draw a line with the width that i want so i can choose the pen width also right so and i can also add a text here so i can expand the text area and i can add the text as well so when if i want to clear all these annotations a single click would do clearing all the annotations right suppose i want my students also to comment on this inside by using an annotation tool there is another icon called turn multi user whiteboard on so i can turn this on by have, by giving a simple click so now you can find two rectangles so that it is meant that it is shared between your users so i can call an uh, a student to share to annotate something in the screen so you can see i am now navigating inside this powerpoint presentation so you can see my name if i ask a student for example with the register number 36 to annotate or uh, draw something or write something here you can see his mouse pointer with his name so this prevents us to uh, it it uh, helps us to detect who is scribbling on the whiteboard and also prevents restricted uh, access uh, or uh, gives restricted access to the whiteboard and if you want to stop sharing just move on there and uh, click again to turn it off and now only my uh, annotation tool is available now so this is how you use this annotation tool the next very important topic is poll creating a poll as we are involved in online teaching we should be posting suitable polls inside our presentation so this is made very simple with uh, random polls as well as planned polls so i shall move with the slide where i have a poll uh, now you can look uh into the powerpoint presentation i have an embedded question inside so i have a question with four possible answers right so i'll be displaying it with the students and discussing among them and i shall ask uh, them to choose an option right so they will be look into the presentation and, and uh, they'll be choosing the option and now i'll be launching a poll with that by a simple putting plus so i'll be starting a poll here um polling has lot of options to move with we have an yes or no poll true or false poll two option poll three option four option five option if you have more than five option you can create a custom poll as well as uh, with more than five options so i have four options so i'll create four option now so i am going to create a four option poll 
So now students will be able to see four buttons with A, B, C, D displayed and they will be able to click any of the one button. And whatever they are displaying will automatically get into this graph as a progressive bar with number of students clicking A, B, C and D. And you will be having a list of students displayed here. For example, 40 students joined in a session. Out of 40, how many have answered? That will also be uh, displayed here. 30 out of 40, 32 out of 40. So it will be randomly increasing. And also under this user's response, you will be finding individual responses of each and every student. For example, I have 40 students. There will be a list of 40 students and all their responses. Who have answered A, who have answered B, everything would be visible here. Although I, I think there are uh, no options for them, uh, these options to get downloaded. Uh, but it's clear with us to know uh, how many have uh, closer to the correct action answer and also there is another interesting thing is the top of the student list will be containing the names who have not given any answers for the polls so there may be some students who uh, face difficulty in answering or there may be some students who just uh, put on the session and move away from the session so there is a possibility to catch those students here so we shall find uh, who are all the students who have not answered for this poll at the top of this list and after uh, and these things will not be uh, visible to the students only it is visible after publishing so if i publish the polling results it automatically gets embedded into your slide so how many users answered for a b c d and then we shall discuss the correct answers as well and you can go for an random yes or no question true or false question um, in inside your presentation so you can go back to polling option and again you will be finding all the polling and you can close this and then you can again have a quick poll so quick poll is that whatever that you have recently polled it will, it will be appearing again so i have a quick poll i'll be having an abcd because this is the most frequently used option by me so this is again a uh, handy tool for us so by this time i have explained you chat poll and uh, how to save attendance, how to log students and how to use annotation and everything. And uh, another and also I have uh, uh, informed you how to share an external video and getting embedded into this big blue conferencing system. But there are some situations where I need to give a demonstration on external software. So I need to share my screen occasionally. So for that I will be moving this sharing your screen. So I am clicking this sharing your screen. I will be given three options entire screen application window and a chrome tab so uh, i am now here going to show an uh, a c++ demo so i'll be moving with the uh, application window with select this option and put share so automatically i am going to get my uh, c++ editor here so this screen is automatically shared in your uh, big blue conferencing system so i'll try to share my screen again so now my students would be able to see this screen and not the powerpoint presentation that is being loaded so i can show some code or any demonstration and i can even run this code so whatever that i have planned to explain with this window i can do this uh, uh, for my students Okay, so I can even execute. So anything could be done here. So I can show the results to them. So how things will be working on uh, this software. So all these things could be. And now um, after sharing your screen, you can at any time you can stop sharing and come back to the original uh, presentation. What you have loaded into the Big Blue. So this is how you can navigate between various options in Big Blue Button Conference. And you can uh, start and resume recording at any point inside your session. You can start by having a simple click on the start recording button. And uh, you can uh, talk and have a lecture to give a lecture to your students. And after some time you can pass and ask your students some question. And then uh, uh, after uh, you start your lecturing again you could uh, resume your recording. So that uh, I am here now posting a question. And after getting all those things I will be moving to the next slide. And the next slide also I have a poll here. So I will be moving to the next class. And then uh, I can resume my recording to start my the recording of my lecture.
right so at any time i'll i uh, it, it it is easier for me to start and resume my recording so i'll stop my recording here i have it 25 seconds or 30 seconds recording here i'll stop this with this when i get back to this uh, webinar room after ending the meeting i can find the presentation recordings getting stored here uh, with the date and time and uh, the duration and as well as we have three types of settings here you can make the video as private and you can publish or unpublish and you can even delete so students will also be able to see the same presentation in their dashboards by clicking this playback presentation they'll be able to look into and there is no option for uh, downloading the video so they can just uh, watch the video by logging into their respective moodle dashboard right uh, there is another option with uh, this big blue button i think i have covered all the basic functionalities of big blue including chat poll screen sharing adding an external uploading a presentation annotation and sharing the whiteboard everything so uh, these are essential for uh, uh, launching a conferencing inside the big blue and now i'm going to discuss another tool called breakout rooms if you are interested to proceed with you can otherwise uh, you can use whatever uh, the tools that have been discussed so far and uh, initiate a big blue conferencing system right so we'll be moving out breakout rooms so breakout rooms are uh, options in which you can group your students randomly to ha um, have their own discussion inside their groups for example i can give a concept to discuss among yourself i cannot have the entire 42 or 60 to discuss among themselves in a room so i can create breakout rooms so that a room can contain some limited set of people and only discussion can be initiated among them so if i create a breakout room uh um i uh, we'll uh, have so much of users actually we'll have to 40 60 30 users here so number of rooms can be from 2 to 8 i can exactly divide the classroom into 2 or i can have an at most 8 groups so if i choose 8 groups and i can even specify how much time that they should be discussing right so if i create eight rooms eight rooms would be created and uh, uh, i can even allow my users to choose a breakout room to join but at this time i'll not use this option so that if i have 40 students i when i randomly assign those 40 students would be placed up randomly in these eight rooms so five students per room will be automatically uh, put up in these rooms and i could simply create so i'll be going for an one minute breakout session so it 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 is telling me you must place at least one user in a breakout room so then it is there is an option of creating breakout rooms and after creating breakout rooms i'll be finding a set of rooms here in the left panel and i can enter each and every room and i can uh, listen to what the students are discussing so as a moderator i have the right to join all the rooms and look into their discussion and come back so this is how we shall initiate a collaborative learning also inside the uh, big blue button so i have covered all the basic functionalities available in the big blue button hope the video helps you thanks for watching thank you